The Atari ST Tengen Trilogy Crack the Seal. You mean Tengen made games for some Atari machines and not just NES unlicensed cartridges? Find out about three of the best as we open and play the Tengen Trilogy for the Atari ST. The Tengen Trilogy is a 1990 release for the Atari ST, Amiga, ZX Spectrum, and Amstrad CPC. We will be focusing on the ST version today as we explore the history, reviews, and crack the seal on my unopened copy of this Atari Games compilation for the Atari ST range of computers. Tengen was the home arm of Atari Games who could not publish console or computer titles under their own moniker after the split from Atari Corp in 1984. Because of this, they chose the Tengen name and began self-porting to the NES and Sega Master System or licensing out ports of the post-1985 Atari coin-op titles to the likes of Domark and others. If you were an owner of an Atari 2600, 7800, or Atari 8-bit in the USA, you might have looked on in jealousy as some of the best Atari coin-ops stopped being produced for your machines with the rise of the NES, Sega machines, and even the TurboGrafx-16, the only Atari console to get a significant amount of Tengen releases was the Atari Lynx. But well before it finally started receiving good ports of these games, the Atari 7800 languished with no new flood of Atari coin-op titles, leaving a goal for Atari owners who had grown up playing some of the best ports on their Atari branded machines. But an Atari system besides the Lynx did get some significant support in the way of an abundance of Atari games titles, many with the Tengen label, from a company called Domark, who were prolific in producing Atari games licensed titles for the ST. From APB to Hard Drive-In, the ST received a wealth of ports to satisfy the hungry Atari gamer. We will cover all of the Domark Atari ST and Lynx titles in upcoming separate videos, but today we're going to explore the three in the Tengen Trilogy, Cyberball, Clax, and Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters. I could not find any reviews for the Tengen Trilogy for any of the four systems it was released on, but let's first crack the seal on the box and take a look at what's included, and then we'll check out the reviews and other trivia as we test them on my 4160 STE. And a rata note here, the Atari 2600 and 7800 did receive conversions of Clax, but the 7800 version was never released. Here we are with my Tengen Trilogy. It's in a shrink-wrapped plastic box, and we're going to crack the seal on it right now. But first, let's take a look at the front of the box, the back of the box, the games in the Tengen Trilogy are Cyberball, Clax, and Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters. This is a 1990 release by Domark. It came out for the Amiga, the Atari ST, the ZX Spectrum, and the CPC. Okay. Here we are. Let's listen for the crackling sound. The original shrink wrap smells like original shrink wrap this is in a very interesting plastic box okay so here is the box contents it opens up like a clamshell the inside has a a little it's almost like a dvd case it's not it's a big dvd case with um, a little advertisement for other games. So back here you got Castle Master, Hard Drive-In, um, 
in a couple of the games that I can't 100% see without my glasses on. Tubin, Pictionary, uh, and a couple others. Ancient Art of War at the Sea. Um, and we will take a look at this in, in detail. Here is something very interesting. First we have the discs. Here's Clax. Cyberball. Cyberball 2. Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters. Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters Disc 2. Now, in here is instructions, separate instructions for all three. First, you have separate instructions for Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters. And you have some Clax instructions. And you have Terminate Cyberball Playbook, which is incredibly necessary to play this game. Uh, you need some special controls for doing some pass plays and things like that. It's basically a robot version of football. So that's the contents of the package. Let's move over to the 4160 STE and play these games. Note, as you will see as we go through these titles, I have played and recorded them all in three ways. First, I tested the disc directly in the STE. Because these games play in 50 Hz, and they are not switchable for the most part from the discs, the screen will flicker a bit when recorded via the external camera. Next, to combat this, I loaded the games up on the STE from the hard drive emulator and changed them to run at 60 Hz with a toss switcher. This way, the games will usually play fine and be recordable via a camera pointed at the screen. In the case of at least one of these games, I could not get it to work in any of these methods and had to emulate it in LaunchBox. Cyberball is a 1990 release of a conversion of the 1988 Atari Games coin-op that can best be described as American football with robots. As the story goes, football players began replacing broken and battered limbs with robotic prosthetics in the early 2000s, and in 2022, the last fully human player suffered a vicious face mask violation and was replaced with a machine, leaving just robotic players in America's favorite pastime. ST Action Magazine in July 1990 reviewed Cyberball, giving it 80%. They liked the graphics and action, but felt the sounds could have and should have been much better. The One and ST format also gave it similar scores of 79 and 80 respectively. I started this one up in the STE, but transitioned to emulation for gameplay because the screen flickers off the disc and the hard drive version will not boot up on this machine.
I find this game pretty fun to play. It's basically American football with robots, and they did a very nice job on implementing the American game in a unique way. This adds to the current shortlist of pigskin games for my planned video on baseball and football on the Atari ST. Clax is a 1990 release of a 1989 Atari Games coin-op that is best described as a color tile stacking version of Tetris. The idea is to stack tiles in threes based on color, creating a clax when you do so. The stacking can be vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. This will remove the match tiles and the ones on top will fall down. The biggest difference between clax and Tetris is that the player gets to catch and then find a place to drop each tile. It both simplifies the game for beginners and adds an extra skill and time management challenge at higher levels. ST Format Magazine gave Clax 87% in June of 1990, calling it fiendishly addictive. Both CV&G and the Game Machine magazines gave it scores in the 90s, and while it never had enough variety in play to rival Tetris, many a computer gamer in the early 90s succumbed to its charms and wanted to play just one more game. I had never really played Clax much before I booted it up this time. It's quite fun and gets to be a pretty decent challenge right about level 3. There's an STE improved version that uses the blitter and new sampled sound. To get the sounds playing in the correct frequency, I had to use emulated footage of the standard release here. Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters is the third and final game in this triple pack. I recorded about this one a little while back when I did a video on four-way scrolling run and gun games for the Atari ST. I noted then that it was a fun blaster where you must rescue hostages from the robots. It's a little bit like a modern for the times Robotron 2084, as ironic as that might sound today.
In August 1992, ST Review Magazine gave the budget version of this 5 out of 5 stars, saying high quality laughs and gameplay are in store for those who succumb to the $7.99 purchase price. Ace Magazine, Atari ST user, and CV&G all gave this arcade port scores at 80% or above. This game is an absolute blast to play. Even though the push scrolling can leave you open to some unforeseen attacks, it cements Domark as one of the best developers of ports for the Atari ST. In a past video, I demonstrated this running in emulation using Mega STE settings. This is still how I prefer to play this game, but even on a standard stock ST, it's a quite fun and very humorous game. That's it for this time. Would I play this package now as an ST owner? Yes, of course. All three games are very fun and mostly take advantage of the ST's capabilities. Again, I found that Escape is better played in emulation with Atari Mega STE settings, and there is a new STE updated version of Clax available, so it might be better to try it in an emulator or on a real machine with those capabilities if you have them. Okay, thanks for watching, and have fun playing your choice of Tengen Classics on the machine of your choice in the vertical blank.